back in the day, maybe like the early 90s, there used to be this show on, uh, I think it was on ITV, presented by Chris Tarrant. Yeah, it was uh, ingeniously named. Ingeniously named? Inge- ingeniously? Ingenious? Genius? It was brilliantly named. Um, Tarrant on TV. And what Chris Tarrant used to do was he'd um, just show clips from wacky foreign TV shows, like game shows from wacky countries, like Japanese game shows and European game shows, South America. You know, all kinds of lunacy going on so we could laugh at foreigners and how silly they were. That was the idea. And, you know, they'd, they'd uh, have you know, people submerged into a bath of maggots or electrocuted or, uh, you know, have to eat eat um, animal dick. All kinds of weird and disgusting and fucked up shit. And we go, ha, 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 look at those silly, bloody foreigners and their wacky TV shows. <laughs> you wouldn't find us being twats like that. <laughs> All smug we were. Smug, thinking how superior and great we were. And then, uh, you know, I step into the 2000s and we had shows like I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, where people were eating crocodile penises and being submerged into baths of maggots and so forth. And uh, Big Brother would eventually sort of go that kind of way. And many other shows followed suit. And suddenly, we were the wacky foreigners, looking like complete fucking idiots, doing wacky foreigner things, and no longer could we be superior and smug that our entertainment was more highbrow. See, that's one of the problems. You look around the world, you see what wacky shit wacky countries are up to, and yet, what we're actually looking into is a crystal ball into the fucking future. Yes, that's right. This. So it's very hard to point when it's the opposite way. This, China's Xinjiang Citizens Monitored with a Police App, says Rights Group. This could very much be a vision of your future. Not my future, because I will not be in the same country as you. I have made my decision on that. So Chinese police are using a mobile app to keep data on millions of ethnic Uyghurs. Uyghurs? I'm going to call them Uyghurs. Uyghurs. I do know how to pronounce it because I have watched something on it. Um, But I can't remember. So we'll go with that. Apologies to all the um, people. Uh, In the Xinjiang Xinjiang province, according to Human Rights Watch. Now, the Uyghurs... I'm not going to read the rest of this because basically that's the Muslim uh, population of that province where um, you may have heard about the Chinese internment camps or uh, whatever they are, you know, where they're re-educating Muslims on how to not be Muslim or whatever it is, be more Chinese. Um, There's a sort of long history of issues between, you know, different ethnic groups and and the Uyghurs themselves, and that's kind of where, you know, as far as I'm aware, the problems that they've had is what started the ball rolling with these um, re-education centres that they have. So, um, it's the most intrusive surveillance system. According to the Rights Group's report, the app is used by officials to record and file away information about people. In particular, it targets 36 person types that authorities should pay attention to. These include people who seldom use their front door, use abnormal amounts of electricity, and those that have gone on haji, which is an Islamic privilege, uh, Privilege pilgrimage without state authorization. That's right, state authorization. The report does not make explicit mention of any ethnic group specifically targeted, but the 36 person types include unofficial imams, Islamic leaders, and those who follow Wahhabism and Islamic doctrine, or otherwise known as the worst form of Islam on planet Earth. Now, the information taken from the app will be fed into a central system of the Integrated Joint Operations Platform, or IJOP. That's a snappy little uh, acronym there. Is it acronym? Pseudonym? Acronym? It is acronym. I don't know. I can't be fucked. The main system for mass surveillance is Xinjiang, says Human Rights Watch. So Human Rights Watch senior China researcher Maya Wang, (laughs) if you see Maya Wang, (laughs) said IJOP was one of the world's most intrusive mass surveillance systems debatable. 
It gathers information from checkpoints on the street, gas stations, schools, pulls information from these facilities and monitors them for unusual behavior that triggers alerts to the authorities. This app was obtained and analyzed by Human Rights Watch in partnership with Cure 53, a Berlin-based security firm. Cure 53, kind of a disturbing name for um, a Berlin-based security firm, don't you think? That sounds weird to me. As well as its Xinjiang operations, China has 170 million CCTV cameras in place across the country. And by the end of 2020, an estimated 400 million new ones will be installed. That's fun, isn't it? And this, all this is part of China's aim to build what it calls the world's biggest camera surveillance network. That's nice that they're open about it. China's also setting up a social credit system that means to keep score of the conduct and public interactions of all its citizens. That's something we've heard about. Um, that's quite terrifying. The aim is that by 2020, everyone in China will be enrolled in a vast national database that compiles fiscal and government information, including minor traffic violations, and distills it into a single number, ranking each citizen. You know that big communist utopia that you want? Oh, here it is. There it is. Yeah, here you go. You know, I know that might not, uh, their economic system may not be uh, as uh, communist as it was, but everything else is still there. Everything else is still ticking along nicely. China's detention camps. Now we know about these. And so the mostly Muslim ethnic minority, the Uyghurs, if I can pronounce it properly, make up around 45% of its population. Human rights report comes as China face increasing scrutiny over its treatment of them and other minorities in Xinjiang. Up to one million Uyghurs are currently being held in detention camps across Xinjiang, the UN Human Rights Committee heard last year. A million. A million. As more people and live in many cities in the UK. One member said she was concerned by reports that Beijing had turned the Uyghurs autonomous region into something that resembles a massive internment camp. BBC investigation last year revealed that what appears to be a large prison type structures have been built across the right. So it's just going into them. Now, look. There are people out there, and you you may walk side by side with them. You may be friends with them. That would be quite happy with this kind of thing going on, a police app monitoring everything. Because look at the way it's going, right? And I said this in a previous video when you know talking about you know Saudi Arabia's wacky laws that they have, you know, on their um, you know, their wife monitoring apps and uh, crucifying certain people, and obviously what's happened in Brunei. Although I think that's I think they're changing their mind over that. Like the public outrage from across the world had, may have actually worked, which is surprising. Um, but you know, the stoning to death of homosexuals. Okay. And what I said before, I'll say it again, is you know, certain people uh, would, wouldn't mind certain punishments upon certain groups of people because they don't like the way they think. Some people, you know, really don't like pedophiles and you suggested to like a, a blood hungry mob um, you know saying uh, what should be done to pedophiles I don't know there's nothing nothing too everything's too good for them saying, how about stoning them to death would, would that satisfy your urge for blood yeah that'll do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. do you see what I'm saying like they'd be happy with that you could put that through people would accept that because it, it, it fits how they feel you know, their emotions run right. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The mob mentality will tell them. Or stone them to death. Yeah, that's perfectly acceptable. Or rapists. Or people who think the wrong way. People you suspect might be white supremacists, perhaps. You know, those kind of people. Fascists. You know, all those wrong thinkers. People who are apparently abhorrently evil. Apparently no punishment may be too good for them. So there's a hell of a lot of people that would champion this kind of thing if it was again if it was monitoring and oppressing the right people that's right people will happily you know stand there you know pumping their fists saying you know we're all anti oppression anti fascism um we don't want people being oppressed 
that when it's people they think who are oppressors, they will oppress them, because that's that's sort of what suits them, you know, their enemy. Uh, no punishment is too harsh for their enemies, so therefore they think they're right, and therefore they'd happily let this kind of thing happen. And the way things are progressing, it would not be surprising that this is 10, 20 years in our future, as in the people of Western countries that think we are not wacky, crazy authoritarian, country, uh, authoritarian countries. You know, we think, we're, um, we think we're above all that kind of thing. We're not. We're really not. People would happily let this happen. They would. They'd support it. Because there's always a way for them to push it through. You know. Almost 20 years ago, was an extremism seemed like the biggest threat to mankind. We pushed through terrorism laws that are now being used against the people that probably championed them. Mm -hmm. This is how it always works. It always goes down like this. The wacky conspiracy theorists forewarned all kind of things like this. And what did we do? We just went, you're a wacky conspiracy theorist. What the fuck are you talking about? Shut up. 9-11 wasn't an inside job. Now, I'm not saying 9-11 was an inside job. Oh, no, I don't believe that at all. Um, I'm just saying. It was definitely used as a very good excuse to create all kinds of wacky, authoritarian, scary laws that get used against the people. You know? And the thing is, you become complicit because the fear machine pushes your brain to such a degree that you think, oh, yes, of course, yes, do it, do it, do it, get rid of all of them. You know, and now the new fear, the myth of the oh yeah, of the rise of the far right, which literally is like the, the, the smallest threat ever known to mankind right now in comparison to what's going on over the fucking years. Jesus Christ. No, no one was really that terrified of the IRA on a daily basis. And they actually bombed a hell of a lot of shit and killed a lot of people. But fuck me, this, this far right thing is like, who, who they killed? Like in the UK, like for Joe Cox, and that guy was probably just an absolute lunatic. Like, and that's it, I'm pretty sure. And apparently this is the biggest threat going. And the fear machine is that strong that this kind of shit will happen. Because you, you'll, you'll want it, you'll, you will support it. You will condone it. Because if it's going against the people that you're terrified of or that you hate, if it's going to oppress them, it's going to fuck with your enemies, then you will support it. You will be complicit. And then one day, it will be your downfall. That's right. That's right. You see? So, don't sit there all smug, looking at wacky countries and their wacky laws, having police apps that monitor you, stoning gays to death. Don't look at them and think that you're better than them. No. No. Once they sell it to you the right way, once you sell it to yourself and sell it, and then you'll sell it to your friends, you're exactly the same. You know, don't be fucking stupid. You're just a chimp that lost its hair and its decency. <laughs> you think you're more superior than a chimp? Man, we are not. We are not. Just because we can put some fancy words together doesn't mean we're not fucking animals. We are animals. I submit to my urges, my animalistic urges, because I, I am better than you. No, I ain't joking. We're all the same. But some of us aren't thinking right. So how about you start thinking right? You know? There's not two steps to this game. It's not this equals this. There's like loads of steps after it. You know, it's a snowball effect. It's, it's, a, it's the beginning of a journey. It's chapters. Okay. All right. Don't think the book ends on chapter two. All right. You've got to look further ahead, my friend. Anyway, I hope that leaves you feeling uh, all warm and gooey inside and, uh, you know, and, uh, full of positivity.